Okay, welcome back to uh, another tutorial uh, on lifecycle. And today we are going to uh, review the fact find and how it looks from both an advisor perspective and a client perspective. So uh, I've been practicing uh, with a client named Barry Bobby on our system. And in the last tutorial, we learned how to launch the fact find. And I showed you different ways to do that. Um, what I'm going to do is just, just to reconfirm one of those uh, ways of launching. And it's by finding your client in the system in your hotbox. So this time, I'm going down to Barry Bobby at the bottom there. I, click, I select him. I right click on the client. And I can press start sales process and launch the fact find. Now that takes me. That will take me through to the online fact find. So whilst it's waiting, um, it, will, it will take me to the browser mode. Um, and under the browser mode, I can then do my research and my fact finding all at the same time. So uh, it says it rose up. Does it use background noise a little bit? Uh, if you can hear anything, there's a car alarm going on outside. Hope it's not my car. <laughs> it's up now. Okay. So as we're waiting, it launches through, and what it's going to do is going to bring up the uh, the case record for Barry Bobby, and it will um, bring up the page for me to start filling in his fact finding information. And here it comes. I have to cut this in a minute. I'll be cutting this out of the video. That's for sure. <laughs> And we're inside the fact find. So there we are with Barry Bobby, uh, and we can see the start of the process. Now, on the left-hand side of the screen, you've got your um, your hard facts information on the client. So from sales process down to budget planner, this is all the um, sort of the facts around their current situation, their policies, their mortgage, their properties, any assets and liabilities. What we have to do is just do is start off by uh, by confirming the disclosure method and the sales type. So disclosure method relates to the, um, the way you, um, you disclose your status to them as an advisor, to the client, and it can be face-to-face, -face, it could be written, it could be verbal, um, but I'll put in face-to-face -face for this one because we're likely going to see the client at some point in the process face-to-face -face when we do the sale. Uh, and then different types of sale types, distance or face-to-face, -face. so if it's face-to-face -face again, just select that one. Now, looking at the discussion details next, below that, uh, I can select from mortgage, protection, and buildings and contents. And if I uh, was to select protection as well in this, in this instance, what you'll notice is, is that the, uh, the research and the left-hand side of the screen it, 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 um, increases in options for me. If I take it off, then it's no longer, you, can, you no longer see it. Okay, so now if I uh, carry on, I can see the rest of it. It's got my um, my details in there. It's got Barry's details in there. I can press next. Now the rest of the fact find is um, is fairly straightforward, but if we go through each part just quickly in turn to show you what it looks like um, and which bits need to be filled in. So under the applicants, just now I press next. I'm now under the applicants tab. And I can also switch around by selecting the different tabs, and I can do it in any order I wish as well by selecting on the left-hand side. Now, if I'm on the applicants, what we can see is it wants certain information for me for the system to work. So it needs date of birth in there, which makes sense because that's going to help us with protection, quoting, and mortgage lending. Um, it's going to need the employment status, needs that in there as well. You can put in other, other information regarding smoking status, preferred retirement age, and if you do do that, you can also press check, and that will take you through to the HMRC website for state pension age. And the contact details, uh, it asks for the contact method and preferred contact time, and then it has different ways you can contact them. Now, bear in mind that if you are going to um, use the client portal, then you do need to make sure you have a mobile number and an email address in the system. At this stage, if I wanted to add in a second person, at the bottom of the applicants page for Barry, if it was a second person, if it was married, or it was a joint application, then I can press add applicant and it will bring up the second person and you can add them in. 
So no need to add them in at the start of the process when we add them as a prospect. You can do this at any time you want. Um, and I can also remove them if I don't need them in there as well. Below that, you've got dependents. So here you can add children's names. And below that, you've got income. So under income, it will ask you to confirm when you started working, how long you've been working in this capacity, and you would need to put in the accounts. In this case, the guy is um, we've got him down as a self-employed window cleaner. Um, so uh, in that case, it will ask for their accounts, net profit figures, and it goes back uh, at least the latest previous year and the uh, third year back. Uh, if it was um, employed, then on the employed one, if we look at it, it asks for basic income and net monthly income. So you just got to remember to put that in for it to work. Address history, you got to put in at least three years address history for it to be happy with you. So that reminds you here to make sure you put those in. And then it's quite simple from that point forward, adding properties. So property details goes in next. So properties that they own and details about the property. Any existing mortgages they have on the property is next in there. So you'll be putting in things like who the lender is, when did it start, what type of repayment method have you got, uh, what's the repayment amount uh, uh, at the, um, the original repayment amount, what's the remaining balance, uh, etc. Then you've got life policies, so you can add in life insurance policies, income protection policies, and buildings and contents. So that adding in these here will then give that uh, it will then allow you to obviously know what they what they have, and also it will. Uh, start building your portfolio view in the advisor office as well. So it will show the client's assets, liabilities, it will show their commitments, all those sort of things will come through when you finish the fact find. Now assets comes up next, so we can add in savings, investments, pensions, and other assets can go in there. Liabilities, again, pretty state straightforward. Um, this would be anything that's not a mortgage, so it would be any other loans or credit cards. So the little credit history button in there for you just to get take make some basic notes on whether they've got any issues there. Of course, you would ask them to do a credit report for you. Now it does it does give you a link through to complete a credit report via Noddle as well, which doesn't cost the client anything to complete. Final two parts to it are lifestyle changes. Where do they expect their income to change in the future? Do they expect to receive inheritance? Um, how long do they want to own the mortgage the property for? Uh, anything else to add? So I would add in things like uh, pastimes, hobbies, that sort of thing may be there as well as part of lifestyle general. And finally, budget planning. So budget planning, you can fill it in uh, on the amounts that they're paying out. And what I really like about it is this, say that you're paying your heating heating bills, uh, you're paying quarterly, and you know that it's, uh, it costs um, £180 every quarter. Well, you can change that to quarterly and it will then work out in the bottom, it works out how much that costs per week, per month, per year. So quite a nice way of doing it, because normally not everyone pays monthly, and you're often there sitting there saying, well, what was your last bill for your, your car insurance? Oh, I paid £400 this year. Uh, so rather than going, well, that works out about £35 a month, you can actually get it right and uh, put in it's a yearly bill instead of it being monthly. So that works quite well. So at the end of that fact find process, you'll have all the hard facts, you'll know the gaps, you'll know what you're looking for, and then you can start going on to the research part for the mortgage or for the protection, um, which will then uh, allow you to, um, to actually get into what the client needs and what their objectives are. What about if we look at it from the client perspective? So we can send this fact find as it stands from the applicants tab down to the budget planner, we can send that to the client to do for us, to complete for us before our meeting. And we've shown on an earlier tutorial how you can do that by sending and creating an action uh, via the client portal. Um, and the client will then get access to complete this fact find. They'll um, send it, be able to send it back to you and you'll be notified when it's completed. So how does it look for them? Because let's be honest, the view we have is a little bit basic. It's not very, uh, it doesn't look, uh, you know, exactly good to look at, it's not um, something that is, um, is going to impress somebody maybe, but it's, uh, it's basic, it does the job for us. Well, client view is a little bit different, it's designed more for a client to interact with it, 
Uh, and uh, what they see is a nice welcome page, and they basically select the right button, and they can move their way through the fact find. Now, the way the fact find represents itself to a client is in the form of pictures the whole way through. Um, so if we look at the uh, these similar tabs again at the top, all the same as we had before, uh, but this time uh, it represents the client in form of picture-based questions. So really easy to, to complete for them. They can go through it stage step by step if they wish. Um, but of course, if they don't fill it all in and if they don't finish it all, the good news is that anything they do complete will be saved on your side uh, for you to review later with them. So I'll give you some more examples. If we go to the top here, I can just scroll forward to something in later on. Maybe we look at assets. And this time in the asset box, this time we can see different nice pictures again. And if they had investments, they would say yes, and they press the next button, and the investments will again come up. People asking about their type of investment, who the provider is, what's the objective of that investment they, they hold, uh, what they're initially investing, what's their current investment value, um, and it just talks asks those questions on just that investment only. So when they finish it, when they're happy to get to the end, and they've completed it, they can press finish. They can submit their information. And that then forms a, a client completed fact find PDF document in the uh, in the uh, the file as well for us. If I go back to advisor view, I can get back to the fact find any point and have a look at it. So what it is then is that you can use that if you would like to do that with a client and sit there in front of them and have the computer with them. Uh, it might be worth going on the client view and completing the fact file with them that way. Uh, you can do it over webinar even as well. Um, it can look, um, you know, it's maybe it's a bit more entertaining perhaps to complete the fact file with them together. Um, or you can send it to them directly and you can, you can review it afterwards and make sure you fill in any gaps. So that's the tutorial today completed. Hope that was uh, worth your time, and uh, I'll see you again next time.